Hey guys, welcome back to the main event, Daniel. And uh, yeah, today we're doing, we're going back to the NWA, we're going to be doing Starcade 90 Collision Course. Oh yeah, I don't know who's actually colliding here. Well, I guess it's Sting and Black Scorpion, isn't it? So that's the collision course we're talking about. Alright, so let's go back. It is um, December 16th, 1990. Uh, at the Kill Auditorium in St. Louis, Missouri, about 7,000 fans, and the main event, title versus mask, steel cage match, with Dick the Bruiser as the special guest referee, and the match is the Black Scorpion, with his messengers, going up against Sting. All right, now this is another one of those, uh, I, you know, I mentioned how I already knew, like, the double sting thing at Halloween Havoc, because my cousin, you know, he was all about NWA, especially around this period, apparently. Uh, so I already knew about the Black Scorpion as well. This is one of those I already knew about going into. Uh, in case you don't, Ric Flair. Black Scorpion's Ric Flair. All right, so, uh, and I'm not going to lie, it kind of hurt it for me a little bit initially, because I was like, I don't, like, I don't know. I've seen Flair Sting already twice. I'm just not a fan of it. Like, I don't know. I just, I'm, don't care. It's not Flair Steamboat. It's not even Flair Luger. And I know people probably like Flair Sting better than those, but I just personally don't care for it. Uh, you have to see a good match out of Flair Sting. It's just my own personal opinion. So, uh, but I was like, yeah, I'm curious to see this. You know, once again, this is... WCW going into their, or, yeah, I mean, it's technically WCW, uh, NW, whatever, going into this crazy cartoony time. Like, the early 90s was just a little ridiculous with their cartooniness. And I'm okay with that. Like, I'm actually okay with that. Uh, I like the ending of this thing, uh, Vicious Smash. I thought that was really good. Uh, once again, I thought it was kind of executed poorly, but that was definitely the guy in the truck's fault, uh, as I'll get to that in this match, too. Uh, but I, uh, you know, concept-wise, Really good, really good. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into this, shall we? Now, uh, the build up here, uh, of course, you know, Sting has been uh, feuding with uh, Flair and Vicious, and really the Horseman, uh, you know, since he won the title. And then around August, though, he starts getting these messages, these threats from the Black Scorpion. And of course, Black Scorpion said he would reveal who he was, you know, if Sting could beat him. Uh, only clue who's given was like you know he was a, he's a he's from his past from Sting's past and he was a former partner of his, and which is really ballsy if you think about it. like literally this isn't like ancient history like this is literally just still this in, within the year like all these apply to the you know the year, but whatever. Um, so yeah, we get a uh, the cage match. Uh, they signed the cage match and of course it was Sting's title against Black Scorpion's mask. So. Uh, the match itself, so we get Dick the Bruiser out there. Let me just say this one thing real quick, too. Uh, I get the impression, and I mean, I could be way out of line here, and I'm sure if Jim Ross was here, he'd be like, no, that's not the case at all. I get the feeling that Jim Ross does not like Paul Heyman. Like, and I didn't, I don't mention this at the uh, How and Havoc, and I, I forgot it, but uh, it seems like, you know, I, I, you know, I've heard Jim Ross now call these matches with, you know, various people. Like, Jim Ross has been, like, the constant throughout, but... You know, he even called it with Terry Funk, who was just talking fucking nonsense half the time. Like, I hated hearing Funk on commentary. But you get Paul Heyman in there, who's doing a really good job, and it seems like he's unwilling to play a game with him. Like, literally. He, he doesn't want to have any banter or any back and forth or nothing. He's just like, anytime Paul Heyman says anything, he's like, I shut the fuck up. I'm not listening to you. Like, it just, it just, I don't know. It just seems like he just did not care to be there in the booth with, with Heyman. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I just thought it was interesting. It's a little side note there. Uh, we get Dick the Bruiser out there, which, you know, I'm familiar with Dick the Bruiser, you know, I'm, uh, I'm from Indiana, so, boom, like, he was like God around here, uh, especially in the Indianapolis wrestling scene, so, uh, so he's out there. What, right off the bat, I was wrong, cause I didn't, I didn't realize Dick the Bruiser was special. I, I knew Cage Match, I knew, you know, Black Scorpion, he was flaring all shit. I had no idea that Dick the Bruiser was referee, and I'm already rolling my eyes, so I'm like, fuck, like, I'm tired of these legends, and I, I didn't like it when Bruno San Martino was the referee. For one, I'm against referees in a fucking cage. I'm against referees in a fucking cage, but whatever. If it's going to be pinfall, fine, but I was like, you know damn well he's going to want to step in there and break up shit. You should let him go at it. And Heyman said that throughout the night. He's like, you know, really, he shouldn't even be able to break this up. And Dick Bruiser did it. He's like, oh, referee. 
So it was just kind of like, I don't know, I, I, I hate when NWA does cage matches. I don't like them. I've seen enough of them now to be able to judge them. They all fucking suck for the most part. And uh, I just, especially you've got a referee in there who doesn't, you don't need a referee. But, uh, luckily this cage is the cage, like a proper cage. It's not the cell cage without a top. That they did at the, uh, what was it? No, it wasn't Great American Bash, it was Wrestle War. Whenever him, he fought Luger, when Flair fought Luger, and it was just a fucking joke. Capital Punishment is what it was. Uh, that match was just horrible. That cage match sucked. Uh, so, we got this cage match right here. Uh, you get, uh, Black Scorpion. Now, you get like four different Black Scorpions coming out first. And they're his messengers. Now, I just assumed that was the Horseman. It wasn't until like later on the Horseman runs out there, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Who the fuck are they? I guess they're just jobbers or anything, man. But they all look like it could have been spinning a horseman. Like I'm saying, like, you know, there's Oli Arm, Barry Windham, and Sid Vicious, right? Apparently not. So, anyway, but they go out there, they surround the ring. And then you get this weird fucking crystal spaceship thing. It just kind of like folds up and it twirls around. There's smoke and shit. And it lands right there in the middle. And it comes out. And out comes the Black Scorpion. Now, Black Scorpion. I knew it was Flair, obviously, and when you look at the face, you're like, yeah, that's Flair, but he didn't walk like Flair. I will give Flair all the credit in the world on this match. He did not try to let on too much that it was him running the match. The mannerisms were definitely different. The walk was definitely different. The problem was, it looked like he was a jobber. Now, I don't know if the Black Scorpion had matches before this match, and if he was, you know, racking up some wins you know, prior to this, or, you know, what the fuck was going on, but... To me, because Flair, like, what makes Flair Flair is, you know, his charisma. You know, he's not the biggest guy out there, but he's the dirtiest player in the game. You know, it's his move set. It's, you know, his style, profile, kind of, you know. So this, but when you put a mask on it and literally make him hold back all that, it just looks like a small jobber, like a little masked jobber going in there. So anyways, Black Scorpion's in there, and then out comes Sting. You know, he looks great like he always does. And so we're underway. And literally, it is just Sting beating the shit out. And once again, it looked like Flair, not necessarily struggling, but it looked like he almost like, you know, he kept wanting to maybe jump into his moveset. And he just knew he couldn't. Because uh, he didn't want to give it away just yet. And so, like, it literally was like, it felt like Flair was kind of giving an awkward match starting off. Like, he kind of gets to get into the rhythm later on. But, uh, of course, it's Cage, and, of course, you know, most of Flair's tactic is, you know, stalling out on the floor for 20 minutes of the match, so that's already taken off the table. But, uh, yeah, so you get Sting kind of whipping this jobber's ass all over the ring. Uh, eventually, Back Scorpion does kind of come back, uh, which, you know, once again, the move says it's kind of weird. I thought it was kind of funny. You did have a small section of the crowd early on yelling, Nature Boy. Na like, they kind of, like, they, they can tell it's probably him. And of course, I mean, I guess, you know, storyline, I mean, it just seems obvious now it would be him. But, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, anyway, so, they're, you're finally, once again, Dick the Bruiser's getting in, you know, involved way more than he should. Um, then, of course, uh, Sting eventually gets the win. He right, well, First, he, he does rip off the mask. He ripped off the mask first, but then, of course, Black Scorpion has a white mask on underneath. And so, but now you can see the blonde hair peeking down the side a little bit there. Um, but then, of course, Flair eventually does, or sorry, uh, Sting finally gets the win, and uh, at that point, the other Black Scorpions enter the ring, and uh, they lock the cage up, and they beat the shit out of Sting. Uh, and, of course, with the help of the Horsemen, which I thought was crazy, because I was like, holy shit, like, I figured the other Scorpions, or, you know, the other masked Scorpions, the Messengers, was the Horsemen, but apparently, at least Arn and Barry Windham was, you know, maybe, well, I don't know. Anyways, but they're all in the rings, beating the shit out of uh, uh, Sting, and of course holding uh, Flair back, or sorry, holding um, Dick the Bruiser back. Now, the weird thing was, right before the finish, though, like, right before it finished, you know, the match is even over, like, right before that even happens, uh, Jim Ross is like, well, I hope we have time to see, you know, who's behind the mask. And I thought that was kind of an odd thing to say, right? Because I was like, you know, the match ain't even near over. Like, what do you mean you hope we have the time to, you know? But then, of course, the match is over, and, of course, they don't unmask him right away. So, the whole time, you just got Jim Ross going, well, we're about to run out of time. we got, like, two minutes left. I was like, really? Like, I don't know. It, just, it, it seemed kind of odd right there. So, the locker room empties. you got, like, the Sino Brothers and, I guess, like, Rock and Roll Express or whoever the fuck the team was, that, you know, whatever it was. Kind of getting in the ring. Of course, Rick Steiner has the bolt cutters. They finally get in there. They clean house a little bit. 
Uh, Sting, who gets got DDT'd onto a fucking chair, he gets back up. He's like, yeah, I don't fucking sell for anything. So I ain't selling for a fucking DDT on a chair. Gets up, whoops everybody's ass, and he finally rips the mask off of uh, the Black Scorpion. Now, we can't get a good look at it. In fact, you don't ever get a clear, watch, and, watch it now, you don't ever get a clear look at Flair's face. But right off the bat, you just hear the comments like, it's Ric Flair! It's Ric Flair! Oh, we're about to go! We gotta get out of here! And it, literally, Flair gets out of the ring. And they just, they, they, they cut it. They cut transmission, and you're just like, wow, like we never got a clear look at Flair's face or reaction, like, oh, shit, or anything. Like, you know, there's so many ways you could have done this dramatic reveal uh, in the end, and no, you, they didn't do any of it. Like, literally. And it isn't just having any cameras in position or... The guy who was in the truck was just jerking off. I don't know what was going on, but it literally was just kind of like, uh, it was another lackluster finish. And it was a decent storyline. Like, I love the storyline going into this. Like, this to me, I feel like it should have been a Halloween Havoc type deal. Of course, I guess, you know, Flair, or Black Scorpion Sting, or Flair Sting in a cage, is definitely more of a Starcade match, I guess, than like a Sid Sting match. So, I mean, I get it, I guess, but at the same time, it's like, man, this definitely would fit right in Halloween Havoc. So, yeah, that was, that was, uh, how, or that was, uh, Starcade 90. We unmasked, you know, Flair, and of course, he runs away real quickly, and we just cut the credits, so. Didn't get a, didn't really get a good look at him or anything like that. I, know, I just felt like there was so much you could have done. Uh, so, yeah, that was how we ended that. So, the fallout from this, Sting and Flair would continue the feud, and, uh, early in January, I believe, uh, Flair would actually retain or regain the title from uh, Ric Flair, or sorry, from Sting. Getting tongue-tied here. Uh, Flair would win the title back from Sting. And then, uh, of course, we would go on to, uh, they would keep feuding up to Wrestle War, where uh, the Horsemen would face uh, Sting and his team uh, in War Games. And then, uh, yeah, but that's another, that's going to be another episode for another time. So we'll, we'll get on that some other time. So, uh, so one of them in this match Honestly, for a Flair Sting match, I'll, I'm very surprised. I don't think it was a good match, but I think it was entertaining to watch. To see Flair try to not do Flair moves was amazing. Uh, the only thing I thought gave him away was just when he would take back by drops or when he'd get grill press slam because he always kind of falls to the side instead of taking a flat bump because of the wreck. So, or the crash, the car, or the plane crash. So the fact that, like, he would occasionally take these bumps. That's his only giveaway. Like, he just knew, like, oh, that's Flair. That's obviously Flair. But the rest of it I thought was pretty good. But like I said, or at least as far as him hiding who he is, but the match itself, I see, for the most part, it's more, it's novelty. You know, seeing, you know, his interest was fucking killer. Uh, the story was killer going into The match itself was, eh. The fact that you had a referee and it's still, just NWA, quit doing cage matches. You can't do cage matches. You don't know what you're doing. Seriously, I'm sorry. Cage matches on WWF for now on, cause I'm sorry I've seen I've seen the uh, NWA cage matches and they're just god awful. Uh, so yeah, but this like I said, this match itself was a uh, it was all right. Um, like I said for the most part, I mean it's definitely more of a novelty act, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was better than the Sid Sting match. It definitely more intriguing than Sting Sid, uh, cause Sting Sid really only had the ending and that was it. Even that was botched. So, uh, but yeah, that that like I said overall, it, it was all right. It was what it was. So. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about this match, though. Drop that comment right down below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you were blown away. Like, you're like, holy shit, it's Ric Flair. I had no idea. Uh, so, yeah. Guys, tune in next week. That's right, next week. Uh, we'll be finding out who the main eventer of the 1990 was. Man, a lot, a lot of wrestling. Not a lot, but we had, we had a lot of matches. Time to narrow it down who is the main eventer. Find out next week. So, all right, guys, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.